This was it, the payoff Jester Muriel and his Mandalorians had been looking for. Jango Fett and Montrose Vizsla warned Jester Muriel that it could be a trap though. It seemed too suspicious that the Republic wasn't going to help the Korda Defense Force. It seemed more unlikely that the Jedi weren't going to help them as well. They were the guardians of peace and justice after all. But Jester only half listened. In the meantime, Arla Fett had regained some of her memory from when she was a child. She remembered the black blade of the Darksaber killing her father. The same Darksaber Tor Vizsla was so fond of. Now she needed to run away. She needed to find her brother, Jango Fett, today on Star Wars Fanatic. If you are new to the channel, go on and hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment, and share the video with some friends. Help me blow this channel up. Jaster Muriel pulled Jango Fett aside in their gauntlet fighter, just before jumping into hyperspace. It would take a few hours to get to Korda 6 from Hoth. Most men were checking their weapons and gear, doing comms tests through their helmet links, and making sure all mechanics of their heads-up displays were working properly. Nothing could go wrong in this mission, and it had to be a quick extraction. Little risk, maximum pay. Jaster told Django he felt he was getting too close to Montras. Django looked shocked. But you said you were going to trust him. Jaster answered, he's always been there, but there is something about him I don't trust. He has changed through the years. He isn't the same man I began fighting beside. Django began wondering about Jaster's well-being. He didn't respond much to what Jester had been saying about Montrose because he respected Jester. He knew they were fighting on the right side of this war, and beside that, Jester had saved him as a child. Not only saved him, but made him a Mandalorian. Sure, this wasn't the way Jango Fett had envisioned becoming a Mandalorian, but Jester made it happen regardless. Had Jester Muriel not been on the Clan Fett farm that day, Tor Vizsla would have killed him, along with his family. Now, it was time to show Jaster why he saved Jango Fett, the last of Clan Fett. So, he didn't argue with Jaster about Montrose Vizsla. He just took it with stride. Meanwhile, Tor Vizsla told his nephew to place a call to Jedi Dooku. It was time to show the Jedi how evil the true Mandalorians and Jaster Muriel really were, and they must be stopped. He had promised the Jedi that neither he nor his men would fire on Jester Muriel's men until a summit was revisited. However, another meeting went by and another meeting without Jester Muriel, nor the courtesy of sending his regards. The Jedi were becoming frustrated with the whole situation. More and more Republic worlds were being dragged into a civil war that had nothing to do with them. Dooku appeared on the hologram. What is it, Tor Vizsla? I have gained intel that Jaster Muriel intends to attack the Korda Defense Force on Korda 6, replied the Death Watch leader. That is a Republic world. They should know we would defend it to their demise, affirmed Dooku. Yes, Master Jedi, but from what I am hearing, they are desperate, looking for resources or credits any way they can get them. There is a small band of rebels on Korda 6 that threatens the monarchy. If Jaster joins them, they stand a chance at overturning the government, and Jaster would have a Republic base. I would like to go to Corda 6 and stop this insurgency and push Jaster Muriel off Corda 6 and out of the inner room. Tor replied, Very well, Mandalore Vizsla, but we will be watching over this. Enough of your battles have caused Republic deaths. If we see anything resulting in innocent casualties, you all will be expelled to the unknown regions to finish your little civil war. Is that clear, Mandalore Vizsla? Very clear, Master Dooku. Immediately after the hologram of Jedi Master Dooku disappeared, Tor placed the call to the Corda 6 Defense Force. They are coming for you. I have confirmation that Jester Muriel and his men are coming to kill you all and take your monarchy. We are en route to back you up. What he didn't tell the Jedi nor the Corda Defense Force was that he and Death Watch were near Corda 6 the whole time. They had been waiting behind one of its moons, waiting for the permission of the Jedi. He could not afford this plan to work without their consent, and he would need their sympathy later. Arlofet had been informed of everything just before leaving Cor Concordia. She didn't know the j deceit, but she knew her brother and his men were going to attack Corda 6. 
She went along with Tor's plans to stop them because she saw it was a way out. A way to reunite with her brother. True, the battlefield isn't the most ideal place for a reunion, but this was her only shot. Tor and his nephew Pri were planning on destroying the true Mandalorians here. She had to save her brother from the other's fate. She daydreamed about saving him and the true Mandalorians and joining them, but her brother, Jango Fett, was her priority. But she couldn't help but wonder how much of what Tor Vizsla told her was actually true. Arla knew Tor's own brother turned against him when this civil war broke out. He had been fighting against him this whole time, but what's worse, Montross Vizsla had turned against his own son as well. But Arlen knew things weren't always what they seemed. Before she began regaining her memory, she had believed Tor had saved her from the same fate as her family. She had also been told her brother died there as well. But she still couldn't make out the face of her father's killer. All that remained of her memory that day was the black blade going through the neck and telling Django to run. This was all so confusing to Arla. She wanted to scream, but knew she couldn't. She couldn't even talk to her closest friend, Ursa Wren. Soon, there would be a battle on Corda 6, and Arla Fett would slip away to save her brother. She was at least sure of that. Dooku and his Padawan, Kamari Vosa, arrived on the moon that Tor Vizsla and Death Watch were waiting. They would watch their progression from this spot, and if it looked like Death Watch would stray from the objective, the Jedi would step in and end it all. Right now, the Jedi resources were stretched a little thin, but Vizsla didn't need to know that. He also didn't need to know that this would be Dooku's last apprentice and last mission. There was trouble on his homeworld of Sereno, and he would be leaving the Jedi Order to return to his family. The stars went from being solid streaks to dots of light in the sky. Jaster had the pilots align in a way that would not draw attention to them, and they came out of hyperspace just outside scanner range of Corda 6. From here, the planet looked peaceful, nothing much to note other than the striking greens and browns on the surface. For a moment, Django felt peace. Maybe his suspicions were wrong. Maybe this could be a good payout and would get them where they needed to be to with the defense force joining their cause against Death Watch. Hondo Onaka and his pirates were to wait on the far side of Corda Six's smaller moon. They were there in case of trouble and would extract the true Mandalorians or provide cover fire for their escape. It seems Jaster Muriel took Montross Vizsla and Jango Fett's concerns to heart after all. The first wave would be the ground forces, the grunts led by Jango Fett. The next wave would be the jetpack squad and the last wave would be Skull Squadron with the air support and the extraction. Even though it seemed to be a quick job, all possibilities had to be considered. But in Django's experience, nothing was ever simple. Okay, so that concludes this episode of The Road to the Book of Boba Fett, a fan fiction I've been working on. I really hope you're enjoying watching it as much as I am enjoying making it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I love interacting with my viewers. And if you're new to the channel or just haven't taken the creed yet, go on and hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on my Star Wars content discussions, fan fictions, and theories. Hit the like button to show your love for the hard work I put into each video and share the video with some friends. Let's see how high we can take this channel together. Don't forget to join me every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. for a live stream where we talk about Star Wars and just cut up together. And thank you for watching, and remember, this is the way, the only way.